Hi everybody, I'm Hodrigo Gyar, muscular skeletal radiologist, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to start a series of videos about the meniscal lesions. Uh, first, I will talk about the basic concepts or the basic science of the meniscus, and after that, we'll go over to the different patterns of meniscal tears, some special meniscal lesions, and some associated lesions. So, the first videos of this series is going to be about like microstructure, vascularization, meniscal anatomy, and function. And after that, we will progress to the lesions the itself okay so let's start with the most important meniscal function the load transmission okay in this first video i'm going to talk about the most critical meniscal function the load transmission as we know the menisci are crescent shaped fibrocartilage structures that enable effective articulation between the femoral condyles and the flat tibial plateau so they increase the articular congruency and help to transmit the load across the joint. And it's critical to protect the articular cartilage and the subchondral bone. As a matter of fact, several studies have demonstrated that patients with meniscal insufficiency or meniscectomy will progress at a fast pace to degenerative change. And in his classic study in 1948, Dr. Fairbank described the correlation between meniscectomy and degenerative change. So here are some facts about the meniscal load transmission. Approximately 40 to 60 percent of the load acting on the extended knee joint is transmitted to the meniscus. 40 to 50 percent on the medial meniscus and 65 to 70 percent on the lateral meniscus. And in flexion, these numbers, this number increase up to 90 percent. Okay, so how the meniscus execute this, fu this function. So here we have our representation of the knee joint with the femur, tibia, articular cartilage, and meniscus. When we are in a weight-bearing position, a significant part of the load passes through the meniscus and it is distribute distributed evenly on the articular cartilage surface. In a patient, a patient with a insufficient meniscus or without a meniscus, Look what happens. All the load gets concentrated in a much smaller area, stressing and damaging the articular cartilage and subchondral bone that's taking the hit. And the degenerative changes will happen over time. And the meniscus is the right structure for the job. Besides the fact that the meniscus tissue has many biomechanical properties that fit it for the job, another fact it is its malleable tibial peripheral insertions. I'm not talking about the strong meniscal root ligaments. I'm talking about the meniscus tibial or coronary ligaments. In this way, the meniscus can follow the femoral condyles to some extent during the movements of the knee. In other words, the meniscus dances with the bone structures inside the knee joint. And how it's done? Uh, okay, so during the normal loading, the meniscus is compressed by the downward force of the femur. This femoral force acts in an oblique direction because of the meniscal shape and can be divided in two components, vertical and horizontal forces. The femoral vertical force is neutralized by the tibial vertical force, but the horizontal force or vector is not. This tensile force runs radially and tends to open and extrude the meniscus and it will take the meniscus out of the game if it's not neutralized. And that's the hoop stress force. And that's the question, who is going to stop it? Who is going to neutralize this force? And the answer is the longitudinal circumferential fibers. These are the fibers that neutralize the hoop stress and let the meniscus accomplish its functions. And talk a little bit more about the circumferential fibers. They run from the anterior to the posterior meniscal root ligaments. They are located mainly at the periphery of the meniscus and are formed by collagen fibers type 1. And they are the opposing forces against the hoop stress. 
and what will happen if the circumferential fibers fail. It, uh, meniscal insufficiency, that's going to happen. The meniscus will extrude and it will open the gates of the, for the osteoarthrosis. And that's why all the meniscal tears that compromise the circumferential fibers are very detrimental to the knee. For example, we have the radial tears, meniscal root ligament tears, and complex tears among these types of dangerous tears uh, that can cause a lot of trouble uh, in the knee. Now let's talk about this term, hoop stress. Where does this term come from? This concept was borrowed from physics, from mechanics. It is the stress that occurs along the cylinder circumference when pressure is applied. Hoop stress acts perpendicular to the axial direction. One great analogy that we can do is with the wine barrel. The hoop stress tends to split the barrel apart, but the hoop bands counteract this force. These hoop bands are like the circumferential fibers of the meniscus in the wine barrel. Now imagine if you have a person jumping up and down over a mobile top lid of the barrel, increasing the hoop stress each time he lands on it. At this moment, we are getting closer to the type of hoop stress that the meniscus is exposed to. And as we approach the end of this video, just to recap, keep in mind this. When the meniscus is normal, it helps to make the best fit between the femoral condyle and the tibial plateau. Distribute the load evenly throughout the great area of the articular cartilage and the circumferential fibers neutralize the hoop stress that keeps trying to extrude the meniscus. And when there is a lesion that makes the meniscus insufficient, like a complete radial tear, for example, uh, that, that compromise the circumferential fibers, the meniscus extrudes, reduces the contact area between the femur and tibia, putting more stress on the cartilage and subchondral bone and accelerating, speeding up the generative articular chains. So, okay, that's it for now. In these last few minutes, we have revealed the primary meniscal function, the most important meniscal function, the load transmission. We also went over some important concepts as the hoop stress and the meniscal circumferential fibers. And being aware of these concepts will be crucial for a better understand or a better understanding why some of the meniscal lesions that we will see in the future, that why they are so dangerous to the knee. And if you like it, the video, Please uh, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and you also can press the bell button to get notified about the new video that's coming out soon. Okay, so that's it for now. Thank you for your attention and until next time.